Greetings, microchurch leaders. I am coming to you via video uh, to set up what we hope to be an ongoing microchurch leader training process so that you as leaders can get some additional training uh, to make the most of your opportunities with your group. I know we've done different things for microchurch leader training in the past. We've, we've had gatherings and we've had check-ins from different people. And uh, you may be wondering, why are we doing this? And why do we need ongoing training? My group is fine, we're doing well. Um, so I, I wanna start with a passage of scripture from Galatians and then talk just a little bit about why this training is important, why it's, it's good for all of us to receive some ongoing training and, and continue to hone our skills and get better at what we do. And um, then I'll share in a series of videos some specific content and some challenges that we're gonna all work on together as leaders. And then you will be getting some uh, check-ins and feedback from some of our team leaders in the microchurch ministry uh, so that we can, we can learn and grow together. So let me, let me start with this passage from Galatians. Six. Here we go with the glasses. This is my new reality. So Galatians is, uh, you know, one of Paul's letters he wrote mostly to address some false teaching that was happening in the church. Um, but he, as in many of his letters, Paul reestablishes for the church that, hey, there are, there, there's, you have been rescued by Jesus and you are welcome and invited in to the kingdom of God, everyone is welcome, everyone is invited. But then there's some specific instructions for how to live as citizens of the kingdom of God. And uh, after we get some of the familiar passages, like from chapter five about the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, um, Paul continues to talk about what it means to walk by the spirit. So let's pick up there in Galatians chapter six. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each of you will have to bear his own load. Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. I'm going to read that one again because I think... Uh, this speaks to my heart as a microchurch leader and maybe to yours as well. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. In speaking with many of you over the years uh, that you have been leading and some of you not quite that long, I, I know that leading the microchurch can produce weariness. There are times when um, we, we may get um, fatigued with just the idea of showing up again another week. And uh, part of what makes us weary is not knowing how it's going. We feel like things are good, but it's really just a feeling and we don't have any really um, clear measures of success. Uh, so we don't, we're not sure if we're doing a great job uh, part of it is the group itself. There are times when the group uh, is is really up and, and things are going well and people are being open and sharing and it, it feels like the spirit is, is active and, and lives are changing. And then there are times when uh, the energy is low and, and the feedback is, is negative or flat and we just wonder, what are we doing any good? Is this really helping anyone? And there are moments, if we're being honest, when we wonder, may, maybe I need to move on. Maybe I need to do something else with my gifts and time, or maybe I just need to take a break. So what I hope we get from this passage that, that Paul is, is writing to encourage these believers in uh, the church in, in Galatia and this area is that the work of caring for each other, bearing one another's burdens, and teaching each other 
to walk by the Spirit is good work. It's just good work, and it's always good work. It's Even when we don't feel like it's good work, it's still good work. And he uses this analogy of sowing and reaping. And the exciting part of planting um, and, and having a garden or a farm is the harvest. That's the exciting part, is that you get to see the fruit of your labor. But there's so much work that goes in ahead of the harvest. The sowing and, and the the weeding and the fertilizing and the watering. And that's what it feels like microchurch is a lot of times. We're just doing all this work and we're not seeing a harvest. We're not seeing fruit from our efforts. And Paul says, don't, don't grow weary. The fruit is coming. The fruit is coming. If the Holy Spirit is involved, you can guarantee that the fruit is coming. The Holy Spirit doesn't waste time or energy or our efforts or our gifts so don't grow weary in doing good. So what I hope we can offer through these training videos is some uh, energy, some, some uh, just shots of refreshment and creativity and new practices that you can build into your own life first and then see them uh, implemented within the group as well. So that's the goal. We're, what I, the challenges that you're going to see over the next few videos are not things that we're gonna, you're going to tell your microchurch to do. There are things that I am challenging you to do, us to do, because I'm a leader also. And we're, as leaders, we're going to implement these challenges in our own lives and as we lead our groups. And then we'll talk about what it would look like to pass these challenges on to our group members. But we have to, we have to go first. We have to set the example. We have to know what it's like to... Uh, expand our comfort zone, to step into uncomfortable places, uh, to talk about uncomfortable things, to challenge ourselves, to develop new practices in our own lives. We've got to know what all that is like before we go to our group and say, hey, we think you should do this, right? So uh, with that in mind, I just want to take a moment to pray for you uh, right here on camera. It's, I know it's weird, but I know your faces. I know your names, and I love you all, and I'm so glad that you're a part of this ministry. And I just want to take a moment to pray for you before we jump into the next uh, video. God, thank you so much for the men and women who are watching this video, who have given so much of themselves to be microchurch leaders. And I pray that you would remind them, God, that they are valued and loved by you, whether they lead or not, that they are um, accepted and they have belonging, whether they lead or not, but that you have gifted them to lead, that you have given them resources that are valuable to the kingdom, and that they get a chance through microchurch to invest those resources in the lives of other people, to partner with your Holy Spirit and seeing lives changed. And we get... We, we acknowledge, God, that we don't always feel like we're doing a great job, but we acknowledge that you are good and you are always doing good and that the work that you've given us is good work. So would you encourage them? Would you remind them that they are not alone in this, that you are with them and that you are for them? And would you remind them that life change is not their job anyway, but it's something that only you can do and you have taken that on yourself? Would you refresh their hearts for their group members so that they just can approach their group with love and compassion? Would you refresh their spirits through their own time of prayer and study so that they're ministering out of the overflow of who they're becoming in Christ? And God, would you use us to be a blessing to our group members so that they can move in the direction of Jesus-centered living, all for the glory of your name and for the expansion of your kingdom? In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much again for what you're doing and the sacrifice of time and energy. And uh, I look forward to stepping into some new challenges together and seeing what God can do um, when we're intentional about growing in our skills. But in the meantime, God bless you and uh, keep up the good work.